What's up guys, I'm Zach. Welcome back to Workshop Edits. In today's project, I'm going to take you into a place that I usually don't show in any of my videos. This is where I do all of the voiceover recording for any project that I've ever done since I moved into my new shop. But what you don't see is the really ugly, horrible looking table that I built about three years ago that I usually drag over here and sit on while I'm doing that. So in today's project, I'm going to show you how I started from scratch and built a brand new stool that I can keep in the shop and be proud of that is also epoxy based and has a really cool floating look to it. So stick around and I'll show you just how I did it. I've been wanting to try an epoxy project for some time now and thought that building some sort of stool that gave off the impression that it was broken and floating would be a really cool first try. I began the project by breaking down some 8 quarter walnut that I had bought, first jointing a straight edge, followed by ripping the opposite straight edge at the table saw. The material was really flat to start, so I didn't need to do any planing, plus I wanted to preserve as much thickness as possible. I marked and measured out roughly how long I wanted my pieces to be. The goal was to cut to rough length and preserve as much extra material as possible in case I needed it for later on. I grabbed my table saw sled and lowered the blade height so that it would cut a very small curve in the piece on each side. My plan for this project was to break the walnut in half and then split the pieces apart and fill in the voids between with clear epoxy to make it look like it was a floating stool. And the point of the kerf was just to thin out the place where I was going to be breaking the walnut but without sacrificing the overall thickness of the material. After cutting the kerf, I took the piece back over to the edge of my bench and used my biggest clamps to secure the piece in place. And I don't think I was truly prepared for how strong this walnut was going to be. Or how weak I might be. Maybe it's both. In reality, I should have borrowed a large sledgehammer for the job because it was pretty much failure from here on out. With the piece clamped in place, I began my best efforts to snap the wood in half. And nothing I did worked. I literally tried running it over with my truck. Nothing. Also, shocker, jumping on it didn't work either. So I caved in and took it back to the table saw to rip it into smaller strips. I figured it was just too thick of a piece overall for me to break with the resources that I had on hand. Even with it clamped up and ripped into strips, my small hammer did nothing to it. It wasn't until I cut a further curve into the piece and jumped with all my might onto that center seam that it finally snapped. I'm disappointed overall with this. If I could go back, I definitely would have done it with a large sledgehammer and not used any curves as the breaks in the wood were not nearly as dramatic as I had hoped they would be. Once the pieces were broken, I could begin the process of making my epoxy mold. Having never done this before, I just followed every step that I had seen in the videos that I had watched prior to this project. To start, after ripping down the base of my mold, I took my leg pieces over to the miter saw and ripped off a small variable length from each piece so the amount of epoxy in between each leg was slightly different. Then I could properly rip down the borders of the mold. And lucky for me, I had this big piece of 3 quarter inch melamine on hand from a previous project. Now I had no plans to reuse this mold, so to hold things in place I used pocket hole screws. And this actually was really great for securing the piece, and I'll show you why in a second. Before assembling the mold, I covered all the surfaces of the melamine with packing tape. If Black Forest Wood Company has taught me anything, it's that using packing tape makes demolding much easier. As you can see, I had cut the longer border pieces to be long enough so that I could separate the walnut pieces and leave a 4-6 to six inch gap between the pieces for the epoxy to fill up. Once I had everything positioned where I wanted it, I clamped everything together so that I could flip over the mold and apply a bead of silicone to the underside. This would prevent the epoxy from leaking out from any of the seams. Once all the surfaces were covered, I could flip it over and secure it down with screws. The pocket hole screws were so great because as you drilled in, it actually pulled in the side mold pieces even further to make it a very tight fit. And I added a few regular screws to the end pieces to tighten up those loose ends in addition to the pocket hole screws. And if I could give one piece of advice after doing this once, it would be to add more silicone around all of your borders so that none of the epoxy can seep into any of the places that you don't want it to. For the casting, I'm using an epoxy from Total Boat called Total Boat Deep Setting Epoxy, which is supposed to allow you to pour molds up to two inches thick for smaller castings. Before pouring the mold, I also cleaned everything out with compressed air to get rid of any lingering dust. Now the epoxy directions said that the casting should be done in an environment that is between 62 and 80 degrees so I headed inside to my house to do this casting as my shop in the summer in California was just too hot for this. 
I did three parts mix, one part hardener per the directions, mixed for three minutes, then poured it into the other measuring cup and mixed again for three minutes, and then poured the epoxy in. Now what I didn't show you is that off camera I realized I measured wrong and did an incorrect ratio of mix to hardener, so I actually scrapped this particular pour, eliminated a leg from the piece to help save on epoxy, and did a new pour out in my shop later on about three hours later with the proper ratio. I used basically all the epoxy for this second pour, so no turning back or do-overs at this point. Now while the epoxy set up overnight, I went back to the shop to begin working on the seat. I had the idea to do a thicker walnut seat with a little bit of paduke accent in it. Now I didn't have much walnut left, so I was pretty careful about my cuts and measurements for this. I also planned to make this seat circular, about 12 inches in diameter, so I marked and measured things out so that I could make a seat that was in the rough shape of a circle and preserve material in the process during the glue up. Once all my pieces were cut, I laid them out and applied some Type Bond 2 glue to this. And you can see how I added a few Paduke accents to the piece, and it wasn't until long after I did this glue up that I realized I should have cut down the width of the Paduke before gluing up. No idea why I did it this way. I then let it cure overnight along with the epoxy. The next day I took the seat over to the planer and cleaned up the surfaces, and I'll never not be amazed at how well a lunchbox planer really cleans up your piece quickly. Like I said before, I wanted this seat to be circular, and I've never actually done this technique before of making my own circle jig, so I was excited to try it out. First I cut a 1 inch dowel that I had on hand over at the miter saw, and then drilled out a corresponding hole in the bottom center of the stool with a Forstner bit, and in a scrap piece of hardboard that I had. The little jig would allow me to attach my router to it and spin it around the dowel on the underside of the piece to route out a circular shape. Now I quickly realized hardboard wasn't thick enough to accept screws to attach my router to it, so I redid it with a thin piece of redwood I had on hand and attached my router to it. Once everything was secured, I could turn on and plunge the router as deep as possible through the jig and into the seat and route out a perfect circle. Once I had my circle cut out, I could cut off the excess on my bandsaw and I really, really need a new blade because this took a long time. Now to finish off the circle, I headed over to the router table and set up my flush trim bit. The flush trim bit rides along the circle you've already established and then the bit itself cuts away all of the excess material creating a final perfect circle for you. Once it was done, I removed the dowel and switched up the bit in my router table to a roundover bit and established a curve on the top and bottom sides of the seat to make it more cushy on my butt. Then it was on to sanding. I sanded everything to 120 grit with my orbital sander, removing any burn marks or marks left from the router. Then lots of hand sanding along the edges up to 220 grit for a nice smooth surface. After letting the epoxy cure for 36 hours, I went back and was disappointed to see that there were massive cracks in my pour. And honestly, I'm not sure what I did wrong here, but if I had to guess, it was either doing too deep of a pour, even though it was well within the guidelines of the deep set epoxy, or that I did the pour in weather that was too hot for the recommended pour temperature. Demolding overall was easy, removing the screws, knocking out the walls. The easiest way to pop it off the base is to use a wedge and slowly hammer it into it until it pops right off of the mold. The next steps weren't an exact science, but my goal was to basically clean up one side and begin breaking down the legs back into their individual pieces using my table saw. You've seen me ripping both of those new edges and then using my table saw free of a jig to cut my single mold into three separate legs, again, which was relatively straightforward. And to no surprise, by doing so, it became quickly clear that two of the legs with the cracks would need some big repairs. I went to Home Depot and bought some five minute epoxy for four bucks. And I had never used this stuff before, but my research told me that it was the solution to my problem. I laid a strip of tape down on my workbench and applied the epoxy to both ends of the piece and was blown away at how the gaps and breaks in the epoxy pretty much 100% disappeared once I squished the two legs together. I then used a series of clamps to let things set for about 60 minutes which was double the time recommended to let things fully cure. An hour later I came back to the shop and continued the process of squaring up my legs to be even. To square things up I'd make a cut on two sides of the leg and then repeat for the other two legs, and then move in the fence slightly and make two more cuts on the remaining two sides, leaving me with three legs that were exactly the same size. You couldn't even tell which ones were previously broken at this point. I was strategic in the final dimension of the legs so that I could go back to the router table and add the same round over that I had done to the stool to all four sides of the legs so that the legs themselves appeared round. Just be careful on that final pass as you'll notice that you eliminate your last flat reference point after you've rounded over your fourth corner. Next up was a ton of sanding. I began with my orbital sander at 120 grit, then followed up with hand sanding at the same grit to get rid of any leftover sanding marks. 
After 120 grit, I moved up to 220 and then 400 grit, keeping the epoxy wet during each sanding to contain the dust and also just keep it scratch resistant. Before moving any further, I used my table saw sled and a special setup to establish a flat surface on the inside top of each leg. This would be how I eventually attached the legs to the seat. Next up, I used leftover walnut to cut four small pieces of the table saw that would form the leg attachments. I would only need three, but I figured it was a best practice to just cut a fourth in case I messed up on one of them. To finish these, I rotated my blade to five degrees and then cut the angle on each of the ends of the pieces using my miter gauge. This five degree angle would establish the angle of my legs coming out of the bottom of the stool. And I also cut the tops of each leg to five degrees to match the angle of the leg attachment. And here you can see how things will come together underneath the stool. To finish off the leg attachment base, I marked and measured the final length, cut on my miter saw, and then headed over to the table saw to cut in a series of 30 degree angles to the insides of each piece with the table saw sled. And here you can see what I've been doing all along and how it comes together. The three middle pieces will attach to the underside of the stool and come together in the middle and each of those pieces will attach to the leg. Day three of the project consisted of final sanding each of the legs. Having never done this, I knew the process was to basically sand from 400 where I had left off the previous day and up to 1500 grit. Sanding up to 1500 would remove basically any and all visible scratches from the epoxy and then buffing things out with plastic polish would bring out the clarity in the epoxy. You see me start with 500 grit and doing the wet sanding process again. I also used acetone to clear away the wet epoxy dust after each round. And once I hit 1500, I loaded up this little buffing attachment that I had bought for $3 into my drill press and added some plastic polish to it. I then can pass each leg through the buffing polish and then remove it using the clean side of the attachment. And I was both happy and amazed at how clear it became with polishing, but somehow still underwhelmed that it wasn't quite as clear as I hoped it would be. I think maybe it just takes practice in the epoxy pour up front to get things truly clear, and maybe it also has to do with the fact that these pieces were round and not square, so it distorts things as you try to look through them. Once each leg was buffed, I went back to the stool for final assembly. Using more 5 minute epoxy, I mixed up a batch and applied it first to the surfaces of the base pieces to adhere to the underside of the stool, and I chose this over wood glue for the sole purpose of speed and ease of use. Once I had all three pieces in place, I sat a heavy weight on top of it and let it cure for a few minutes, and then it was rock solid. I then loaded up the interior joints of each leg with more epoxy, making sure all surfaces that would attach to each other had epoxy coated on it, and then compressed each leg into place once at a time. And I used spring clamps to hold them in place while the epoxy cured for an hour. Now I knew that this alone wouldn't be sufficient for a final joint for me to sit on since it was a lot of end grain to edge grain. So I did a little research and found a cool little stool joint method to add a single long recessed wood screw through the leg into that base that I had built to properly secure it. Nothing special and definitely not rocket science, but it was clear that this overall method was really sturdy. Now to hide the screw, I cut a few half inch wide dowels and just used some wood glue to plug up each of those holes. I then let the glue set up and came back with my flush trim saw to cut off the excess and used my orbital sander to flush things up to the legs. Continuing on, before finishing, I gave all surfaces one more sanding to get rid of any excess glue or epoxy that had spilled over from the final assembly. For a second, I considered adding bottom supports to the legs, but honestly, this thing is pretty solid and it won't see a lot of abuse, so the bottom parts felt excessive. Instead, to make it the proper height for my use, I once again went over to the table saw and used the sled to cut each leg to final length. Somehow, by chance, the height I needed for my stool was within half an inch of the overall width of my table saw sled, so I just used that as the source of measurement to cut the legs to final length. And then it was finishing time. Now I'm using a simple semi-gloss oil-based polyurethane for this. And all along, I knew that the finish was going to be the real difference to make the stool look like it was floating. And I was stoked at how awesome the walnut looked against the clear epoxy once everything was covered. The top in particular really had a great color and pattern to it, and the Paducah accents were amazing. And although I had some hiccups along the way with the epoxy, I couldn't be more thrilled with how this stool came together in the end. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for this video. Now, as much as I might have stumbled through the entire epoxy part of this build, I actually had a really awesome time using it and am really excited to use it moving forward in future projects.
If you enjoyed this project or you learned something from it just like I did building it, I would love it if you would like this video. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. I try to put out projects every couple of weeks and I would love it if you guys stuck around for them. Thank you so much again for watching this and I'll see you guys next time on Workshop Edits.